so welcome to another video today it is my what to do with a border print and pattern hacking combo video so i bought this really pretty leafy print from the textile center of course i did it had leaves on it but it technically is a border print because if you oh, haven't ironed this yet so if you fully unfurl this fabric it has two giant white borders on it which for the longest time i could not work out what to do with this i think i have three meters of this print i might have a little bit more i shall measure and find out i was sitting and chatting with you guys about the leaf collection which is back here back in this video which is the spring april to june fabric haul and sewing plans and i've only just started them in the middle of june but i was sitting and chatting with you guys and i was thinking you know what would be really nice is if i use the border print on the cross grain now i'm gonna need to be careful about how far up in which piece i use but i'm thinking i'm gonna do the bodice so that it's kind of like that i've got the white bit going across the top now i was going to go for the entire white piece across the top but I actually think that's too low I think I need to have the print starting around about kind of there so I'm going to cut out the bodice like that and I'm using the by hand London Anna bodice and that's one of my favorite bodices to use and pattern hack with because I can shove any kind of skirt or trousers on and I always think it looks really really nice so yeah I'm going to use the top part of the dress and I'm not sh I think I think that's going to be kind of like the leaf placement I think I'm going to show you how I kind of work out which placement I want to use and then the remainder of it I'm going to use as the skirt and I'm going to do a pleat pleated and gathered skirt with the full width of the fabric I think that's going to look really really nice the other thing I was thinking was perhaps using it as like a jump making a jumpsuit out of it and kind of using the this piece on the on the side or then maybe having the white down the center and the pattern on the side but I think cutting it on the cross grain is going to be the best look but we shall see what I'm going to do is get this ironed and I've actually cut out the lining for this bodice already and I'm going to use that as a template for working out where I want the print on the front the back's not going to be so important but the front is going to be really important where I place these leaves so something like that might be quite nice or yeah I want to make sure it's nice and balanced so I'm going to get this all ironed and then we can work out which print placement we're going to use for the front bodice I have ironed all my fla fabric nice and flat and I have laid it out on the table obviously not super carefully but there we go it is on the table so what I'm going to do now I've already laid out my bodice lining so I've cut this out of cotton lawn I could have cut it out of a white viscose but I like the little bit of structure I get from using a cotton lawn underneath the viscose especially for a sort of semi-fitted bodice which this is around the waist and midriff under the bust so I have positioned it how I think I would like my pattern to come out I think this is going to be a good pattern placement this is see-through enough that I can see the, floor, the the leaves underneath of it I think that's going to be a good pattern placement this one could work but I am a little concerned that there's two mirrored leaves there which might look a little bit odd so yeah I mean they're not exactly identical but they are mirrored enough that I think it might not look quite right so the other thing that I need to bear in mind is because I only have three meters of this fabric well just three meters ten centimeters of this fabric and I want to use all of that for my skirt I'd like my skirt to be as full and as floofy as possible I want to bear in mind the width of my fabric because the further I move this down the shorter my skirt's going to need to be I like my skirts to be at least 28 inches long so when I have got this positioned where I want it I'm going to pull out the rest of the fabric so that it's nice and straight and then just see how much length I have left once I cut this out it's about 37 and a half inches left once this bodice is cut out which is more than enough skirt and I probably will actually make it that long I think it's going to look quite nice when I am 100% happy with my 
placement of my bodice piece. And this is a trick that I use quite frequently if I'm going to be cutting out a bodice where the print placement is really crucial then cutting out your lining especially if it's a sheer lining like this and laying it on top of your print so that you can get the print placement really nicely positioned so that you so it looks good this is a really good trick for doing that I think I'm happy with this I think I think that's going to look nice because I've got the kind of like leaves coming up but I have a nice band of white at the top across the top there yeah I'm happy with that and I've got leaves kind of centralized leaves coming slightly higher up than towards the neckline I think that's going to look nice if it doesn't I'm going to have a really long piece of this fabric to cut out a different style of or a different placement of the print because obviously once I've worked out the length of my skirt and cut all that off I'll then have a whole bunch of fabric left over um, to play with so yeah I'm gonna get this pinned into place and cut out do the same for the back pieces and then I can measure the length of my skirt and I'll, I'll measure from the top down cut that all out then I will use my pleated and gathered skirt method to mark up the skirt ready for that to be sewn onto the bodice I won't go into detail on that one in this video because I do have a full tutorial which I'll link up here for you and down in the description down below. I think this is going to be a really really pretty dress. Right, pinned and cutting out, let's get on with that. As predicted I have a decent chunk of this left, let's see, probably two meters? One, oh yeah, uh, two, one, 180, 1 1.8 meters of this left. Not at all sure what I'm going to try and do with this. I might make a camisole. We all know how I feel about camisoles, but I know you can get Nogden Cami out of very little fabric. I think that this could look quite nice as Nogden Cami. Maybe, maybe that. Maybe that, but I'm going to put it to the side for now. But I have got my dress and my skirt cut out, so I need to mark up the pleat placement for the skirt and I need to find out how, exactly how much fabric I've got and do the math to work all that out but like I say I'm not going to show you that in this video because there is a standalone video that talks you through doing all of that which I will have linked down below for you. Get that pleat placement marked up and then I can start sewing the dress. I'm really excited to see how this one comes, up, comes out. I think it's going to be really pretty. I wish making the bodice was this quick in real life. Good grief can you imagine the amount of Anna dresses I would have made by now. I have sped this up as much as I have because I am not trying to teach you how to make this dress, I'm just showing you the sewing process. There will be a video coming out tomorrow, hopefully, that will show you the process I use to sew the bodice together and how I fully line a bodice. Okay, so I have the bodice complete. Now, when you use a bodice like this and you want to pattern hack it, and this is a really simple pattern hack of just literally smooshing on a different skirt. And honestly, most of the time that is what I do, smoosh and hope for the best. But what I would suggest you do is now that you have finished the bodice, lay it out flat and measure the waistline. That way you can measure the waistline of the skirt or trousers that you want to put it onto and work out if it's going to fit, if it's going to need a little bit of tweaking in between. So say there are some gathers in the skirt, you will need to work out if you need to make the gathers slightly more dense or a little bit less looser so that this, they, they perfectly fit onto the waistline of the bodice that you are wanting to make. So now that this one is done I'm going to hang this up once I've measured the waistline. I mean I know what it is but you know once you've measured the waistline put this to the side and then you can work on your skirt. For me I am doing the pleated and gathered skirt so I have a rectangle of fabric here that I need to measure. Once I've measured it all I can then put the markings in, put the pleats in, press those into place, put the gathering behind the pleats and attach it to the bodice. Do you know, I don't think I've ever tried to do that in viscose before. It was a nightmare. I actually ended up just pleating the excess that usually I would gather in the back so it's kind of like got double box pleats. So there's the, there's like a, there's yeah, a double box pleat basically, so a shallower one behind the bigger one. It looks just as nice and it's probably slightly flatter at the waistline anyway. So I've basted that all into place and now I need to attach it to the bodice so I can put the zip in, finish up the back seam, try it on and work out if I have to line the skirt, cross my fingers that I don't, and then sew the lining down to the bodice only, or cut out 
a I think I'm gonna go for a half circle skirt although actually this has ended up being kind of a maxi dress which I'm kind of loving I was thinking about chopping it down and if I try it on and it looks ridiculous I still can chop it down battery's dying two secs so yes you have power yeah if I sew this on hem it and it looks awful I can still take it off and chop down from the top of the dress or the top of the skirt I can you know shorten it from there can't shorten it from the bottom because I want to maintain the border print but I'm I'm gonna give this a try as a max well it's not gonna be quite a maxi it's gonna be I think the term is mid axi so it's kind of lower than mid calf length but not ankle you know it's not ankle length it's between the two so yeah I'm gonna get it sewn onto the bodice try it on and see what I think see if it is a length that I like on myself or if I need to take it off and redo all that pleating work that I've just done the joys of border prints one eternity later the dress is done I shall show you what it looks like I am so pleased with how this dress has come out. The maxi skirt is a little bit different for me, but I love it. I think it is a really effective use of this border print. This is definitely one of the most basic ways to use a border print, using the border mirrored at the top and the bottom of your garment, regardless whether it's a jumpsuit or trousers and a top or a dress like this one. It is a very basic and effective way of using a border print, mirroring it at the top and the bottom of your garment. This is also a very, very basic pattern hack. I don't overly love the skirt that comes with the By Hand London Anna dress. I like it in a maxi with the thigh high split and I have made a couple of those but the shorter skirt I just don't like how that one looks on me and in my very first foray back into dressmaking was the By Hand London Anna dress. I pattern hacked it and put on a five panel mini circle skirt which I absolutely love. I have not looked back from there. As I said this is the most basic of pattern hacks. I have literally taken a rectangle of fabric, pleated it down to the appropriate width for the waist and smooshed it on and that is usually what I do when I'm pattern hacking. I am smooshing and hoping for the best. So a lot of the times you will see me do this it is with less precious to fabrics because I want to experiment and see what the outcome of that experiment is. That is one of the things that I would highly highly recommend people try is just give it a try. Inexpensive fabric, something that's not too precious to you. Experiment, see what you like, see what works, see what doesn't. This bodice I have done as a v-neck at the front, I've done it as a v-neck at the back. I have added trousers to it to make jumpsuits. I've added a waistband to give more definition at the waist and then skirts. As you guys have been seeing quite a lot recently, I've also hacked it into a top by just extending down from beneath the tucks at the waist and the darts at the back so that there's room for my hips. I find this a hugely versatile pattern and I find it very different looking in all the different iterations that I have made it up in. I've made it up in viscose, quilting cottons, cotton lawns, silk dupionis, all sorts. I think when you find a pattern that you love as much as I love this one you make it as versatile as your imagination. That is the only restriction. Just keep trying. I have some ideas for this one for adding a waistband or like a, a underbust midriff piece and then doing some different things with the top of this because it looks very similar in shape to some of the trashy diva dresses that I love and I think this would be a good starting point for that. Somebody did mention that I could I use this as my basic block to then do alterations from. The answer to that is yes and no. Yes as in I have got the basic of this particular pattern fitting me really well and I can tweak it from there. But as a basic block for drafting other designs, no, because it's already had quite a lot of tweaks made to it, like the underbust tucks, the grown on sleeves, those examples. If I were to make, and I will draft at some point, a basic block, I will be doing it with a waist dart and a bust dart and then darts at the back as well. And then I will use that to transform into lots of different patterns. Very much like Bianca from The Closet Historian, who is a huge inspiration for me. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at how I have worked with this border print and this very basic pattern hacking. There will be more in this series coming. I have a, another border print that I want to use in a completely different way to make a jumpsuit, so I will add that video to the border print playlist. 
If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!